Hi, uh, my name is Daniel. I'm a firmware and software engineer at Framework, and uh, this is our 16-inch laptop. This, this is very special laptop. It's not like a normal laptop. Yes, it can. Uh, everything can change here, even without screws. You can take out the touchpad, the keyboard, hot plug them. That's and too cool. They run open source firmware, and you can take it out completely. If you want to have a different keyboard layout, you can swap on your keyboard. Or if you need RGB, we also have that available. Nice. And just like any of our other systems, you can upgrade the mainboard. If there's a new CPU generation, you can buy only a new mainboard and pop that in and get faster speeds. You can keep your SSD, keep your chassis, your battery, your RAM. What is this part? This is the two RAM modules. RAM modules? Yeah, and just standard RAM, you can buy it off the shelf. You can even here's a 5G, or what is this? Wi-Fi? Wi -Fi? Yep. You could swap it to a 5G? Maybe. 6G, like Wi-Fi 7, you can swap it. All right. And you can also upgrade the GPU. You oh. could buy it without a GPU, just with the fans, or you can upgrade it to a GPU module, which is slightly bigger and heavier, but more performance Where's for gaming. Where's the GPU? Under here in the back. And we can take it out, and then you can see the difference. Ah, uh, it's too cool. Just like the mainboard, in the future you can expect that there will be new GPU generations that you can just swap in your existing laptop. So can I swap it for a Nuvia Qualcomm uh, powered uh, ARM chip or can I swap it to a Ampere ARM chip or Rock chip or it's just Intel? What's the chipset? Uh, we have Intel and AMD laptops right now but uh, we open source and publish many of the documentation. So it's possible to do anything. There's it's a, possible, could be ARM? A third party company has made a RISC-V mainboard. Really? How good does it run? It runs pretty well. It runs uh, Linux. Uh, there's no Windows support for RISC-V yet, but uh, anybody could, could make an ARM compatible mainboard. Does it run Mac system. OS? Mac OS Apple doesn't let you. But why, why isn't it an ARM board yet? How um, much does it take to make a board? We're just doing one by one. Uh, so it, does it have to be your company making them? Or anybody could do it? No, like I said, we publish the interface specifications. Anybody can make a compatible mainboard that fits into the chassis and connects to the camera, the battery and everything. How difficult is it to swap the mainboard? Do you need to unscrew a bunch of stuff or you just pull it out like you did the GPU there? Uh, the mainboard, you need to unscrew a couple of screws. But, it's uh, kind of like under? Here, 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 and here. And Just boom, you turn it into a Qualcomm laptop. Right, runs Linux and Chrome OS or something. Uh, so that's so cool. And here you're talking about also a new one. Yes, this is our very latest. It's going to ship uh, later this year, very soon. It's smaller, 12 inch, is convertible, has a touch screen, and is uh, with a rubber shell to make it more stable. Could be something for your kids. Could you explode it? This one, what's yes. What's it called? Uh, can you show a bit how are the internals? Similar as the 13 inch, you just loosen the screws. They don't come out, so you don't lose them. But then you can take the cover off and look inside. Wow. That's such cool. Who came up with this? Who's the founder? Uh, the founder, founder is Nirav Patel. And sometimes he walks around here. Maybe you can... Is he here somewhere? Not right now. All right. Uh, who are you? I am Daniel. I'm a firmware and software engineer. Are, are you from the US? I am from Germany, but I work and live in Taiwan right now. How cool is Taiwan? Taiwan is <laughs> very cool. A lot because, of engineering uh, here. Basically, if you want to get cool laptops done, you need to work in Taiwan, no? Yes, many of the partners are here. But that's why we have a big office here to directly communicate with them. And our factory is here too. In Taiwan, not in Ch mainland? No, the final assembly of everything is done in Taiwan. And how about the, 
Firmware. Where? What do you do? Where? Where do you need firmware? Um, like firmware, like the BIOS, needs to turn on the system. Or on the 16 inch, the keyboards are just USB devices. They have a custom connector to make them easily plug in. But they run like a USB. But they run like USB. You can have an adapter and plug them into any regular system and they show up like a normal USB device. So I wrote the firmware that runs just on the module to scan the keys and send them to the operating system. So what is a what is a chipset running on the module here? It's like very little microcontroller. Yes, it's very the one. the microcontroller from the people that make the Raspberry Pi. It's the RP2040. So it's designed for the hacker community. Like in our system, it's just like a normal module, but other people are making their own modules and putting them in our system. So you run a firmware on this little part of the keyboard, another one on this? Right. So the, they, they run similar firmwares? Yes, they run a QMK firmware that's common for mechanical keyboards, and we just ported it to our module. That's so cool. Uh, I guess this must be firmwares and everything else here, like a whole bunch of little firmwares in there. In modern electronics, everything has firmware. The battery has a microcontroller that controls the charging. Did um, you in are you involved with that? No, the battery is a standalone module. It comes from the vendor. Uh, what else can you say? Some s special firmwares somewhere else? Yes, uh, one of the main firmwares is the on the embedded controller. It controls the charging, the fans, temperature, and turns on the CPU. So it's extremely important. That's why we didn't write it from scratch. We forked the code from uh, Chromebooks that Google writes, um, which they open source. So we open, also open source our embedded controller firmware. That's How good is that firmware? How good, good is it? Super stable? It's stable, yes. When you push the button, it turns on and stuff? Right. It's kind of important. Firmware is supposed to just be in the background, like you said. Push the button, it turns on. That's all you need to know. But it's kind of like hardcore engineering to do the firmware stuff, no? In the background, what we do is quite complicated. And before we ship it, we uh, need to debug a lot of issues, but... A lot of calls, like in the middle of the night, people say, hey, uh, need to fix something, and then you... Do, do, do you send firmware updates for the little, little keyboard? We do. We have... Uh, everything is updatable. So how often do you update the firmware on this little keyboard? Well, for the keyboard, it's pretty stable. We haven't released any update yet. Okay. How about, uh, do people want to have something else in numbers? You do can. they want to put something else here? You can. Just like other QMK projects, you can uh, customize them by software. There are desktop applications, or also web applications, where you can remap your keyboard to whatever you want. Maybe they want to launch some missiles. <laughs> or something. Uh, they could just use number one for that. And, and then uh, they could have every language. How many languages does the framework provide? Or is, is there a limit? Because the QWERTY was invented because of the typewriter can be written on the top row. That's the main reason that it's a QWERTY. <laughs> but it, how about um, like AZERT, all these guys, the weird French and everything, the Swiss. Uh, we sell many different languages for the different countries. Um, for all of the countries that we sell to, all of Europe, North America, some countries in Asia like uh, Taiwan. Do you use one with umlaut? Yes. Yeah. But I type blind, so I use whatever keyboard I have, and I just remap the keys from the configurator. Nice. Uh, how much is one of these? I don't know. But uh, on can, the framework website, you can go configure, customize. Yes. What you is can, this one? You can look on the website, and you can buy all of the individual components themselves. Nice. So if you want to, if anything breaks, you can buy just that component, and they each have a QR code that you can scan, and they lead you to the instructions for how to replace it. And you how can to follow it one. on Instagram. Or something. So the instructions with the QR code. As, what is this? This is um, because the laptop is very large. It can fit a whole keyboard, and then has some extra space. 
where you can either put a numpad or you can put spacers. Nice. It's uh, so cool. So this one, uh, I see that it says AMD Ryzen. All right. Uh, what do we see here behind? Oh, what is this? What is happening here? This is our first product, the framework 13 inch. And now we have, so just like everything else, you can take it apart. You don't have to, right? It's a fine laptop by itself. But if you want, you can customize it, you can upgrade it. And now we have new bezels. If you want to customize the color of your bezel, you can just pop it off nice. and replace them with a different one. Now we have translucent ones. They are very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, still no ARM version for this neither, right? Not yet. Uh, what's happening here? This is also a brand new product that is going to ship soon. It's an AMD-based um, mini ITX mainboard where you can buy just the mainboard and run it in your custom case or you can buy our case. This is your case? This is our case, yes. Small form factor. It's designed to have a lot of very fast memory and a powerful integrated GPU which is good for gaming or AI workloads. So what do I see in there? Is the special mainboard framework designed? Yes, but the shape is mini ITX standard, so it fits in normal cases. And it has two. And what else is special about? Uh, because framework is involved making it, right? So it's got to be very special in all kinds of ways. Well, desktops are already modular, so we just keep the same modularity. You can easily swap everything. It's got a lot of ports, uh, two NVMe slots, front and back. Uh, we would have to take this off. Here I see transparent version here. Acrylic or you can customize the design. The front plate comes off with the magnets and you can pop out these and get different designs. You can even 3D print them. You publish the files and you can make your own designs and pop them in. Nice. So no Ampere uh, mainboard yet. This AMD partnership, what is this? This is that same mainboard, but we want to show that you can use it for AI because it has a lot of memory and graphics power. You can put four in a rack and connect them with uh, Thunderbolt networking. And then we run, uh, for example, Llama CPP with a large model if you want to run your AI locally. Nice. That's cool. There's a lot of cool stuff around here at Booth. I see one more thing maybe here. Um, what is this? This is if you upgrade your mainboard to a newer one, you have a mainboard left over. But we don't want you to throw it away. You can still use it just by itself. Or we also sell a case for the mainboard and you can use it like a desktop. Just plug into USB power and connect your display, keyboard, and you're good to go. So just uh, Type-C power? Type-C power. And any Type-C display? Any Type-C display. Or is it one you sell? We don't sell any displays, external displays. Just get one that did the Type-C display port output, and then you have this cool transparent transparency here. So you can use this as a little cloud server or something at home. All right. All right. So how uh, how successful is your company? How is it going with the the last uh, couple three? When did it come out? The thirteen. The thirteen came out four years ago, and now we have shipped uh, six different mainboards: Intel and AMD, and uh, one Chromebook. And it's all compatible, so you can use the same chassis for six different mainboards and upgrade them one by one. So do you have customers who bought it four years ago and who were totally happy with the nothing's breaking in terms of the externals? They just update the internals. Right. We do have customers that bought the very first one and uh, just recently upgraded to the latest. Because Can you say how many customers you have or a secret? Uh, I personally don't know how many. But it seems pretty popular, right? Right. There's That's a lot of, there's a community. People. There's a big community of people. We have a forum where people can post what they're doing, 
and uh, what modifications they do, or in general, ask questions, help ask others for debugging. Do you have uh, companies that are fans of you, so they kind of like make alternatives with your open standards? Right, like I mentioned, we like have the, uh, the whole case five and board, and yeah. the case is developed by Cooler Master, but we sell it on our marketplace. So there's other people can make casings, they can make other parts, whatever they want. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, community members that make their own expansion cards. Uh, we haven't shown the expansion cards. All of our systems have Type-C connectors on the main board. And um, in this case, it's a Type-C expansion card. But if you want different connections, like Type-A, or DisplayPort, HDMI, microSD, SD, Ethernet, you can just swap them out, even storage or audio port. You can just hot swap them. You can have one of these that has two Type C's on the side because the space for two. The space is pretty cramped. We are trying to do that, but we haven't gotten a good version of that yet. Is there a special firmware running on these? Some of them need firmware. Um, the Type C and Type A, they don't need any firmware. But to convert from Type C to audio, you need to have some firmware running on that. There's 250 gigs on this one. And cool. they're just standard USB devices, which means they work on third-party devices. Like I can use it on my phone. Nice. And uh, right here, there was an Ethernet one. Maybe you can make a version that has this kind of like Ethernet that pops up. All right, transparent. It's so much fun. That's and really that cool. means if you don't need it, you don't need to carry it around. If people need Ethernet, they can. I can carry it in my pocket. I don't have to have a big dongle. Are there any alternative displays, like where maybe you can swap a display to higher resolution or to a newer kind of display that has longer battery life? We has yes, on the 13 inch, we have had a couple of upgrades that uh, a newer display that has higher resolution. We have a better battery that's the same form factor, but the chemistry is a bit better, so it stores more charge and gives you better battery life. Maybe, maybe there's a battery that can charge faster that comes out. Maybe, not yet. Maybe there's a sunlight readable display. We, yes. Um, there's no e-ink display, right? There's no e-ink display, no. But in the beginning, we had a display, a glossy display, and now you also have the options for a matte display that's more easy to read in sunlight. Cool. Because it doesn't have the reflections. And what do you have? In, if I look on the back of this one, uh, so on the back side here, right here we have the GPU module. On the 16-inch, it can have either just fans or it can have a dedicated GPU. That does the GPU module not include some extra outputs in the back, no? It does include a Type-C port. One Type-C that could do video out? Yes. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you.